condition is really crazy condition. I mean, I shouldn't give away the whole secret to professional winter. Matteo Yakino giving up to an elbow off his body. Here we go. What a finish. The guy is kind of talking bullshit. The team's just got to work a little harder. Welcome to the Windsurfing Podcast, back again for episode 52. And this week, we have a sail designer. An Italian sail designer actually started off his career uh, in yachting, making sails for himself, making sails for other people, and I think some one-off stuff for the America's Cup. Um, He's not actually a big windsurfer himself, but he has proven that that doesn't matter when it comes to designing race sails because he's had race wins on the PWA. He's had race events wins on the PWA. We talked to him about, uh, well, sale design. We talked to him about the R&D process and how you take the information from sailors and put it into that. Uh, We also talk about his top five sale designers and a whole lot more. Who is it? Well, it is, of course, Claudio Badali. Ciao Claudio, come stai? Bene, Maci, can you? I... Bene. piano piano facciamo <laughs> tutto il podcast in uh, italiano no uh, I, I think it's better in English because uh, the people is uh, not so happy to not understanding a lot yeah I you know I think I've been sponsored by like four Italian brands already so even if I'm not trying I, I learned a little bit uh, and and this is languages. You, I know you talk a lot of your languages. Even if you take all, sometimes only the worst words, <laughs> the bad words. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but this is where I want to start because just you know, off the top of my head, RD point seven AV boards, Challenger, Reptile Mast, Mavericks Mast, L three sixty, Nova Nova. Actually, there's two Nova Nova, I think, (laughs) like uh, one I-99 and one Nova Nova. So this is just like eight, nine brands just from the top of my head. What is it with you Italians that you (laughs) you love to produce windsurfing gear? All all Italians, all Italians. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, really, really unbelievable. Uh, The the country where there are other countries like uh, Germany, France, England, UK, I mean, uh, in where windsurf is uh, really 10 times bigger than in Italy. And uh, we have uh, concentrated uh, uh, 50% of the world uh, brands uh, in Italy. That's incredible. Maybe it's um, the mixing of uh, uh, designing and uh, in in in, uh, in windsurfing, you have to use a lot the the brain and the hands, and the Italians are very good on doing that. So we have uh, uh, some idea, and we have the uh, and crafted uh, possibility for doing it. So probably is that probably is that yeah. I, or maybe or maybe it's when you look at the product. I don't know when you look at uh, this phone or whatever or whatever I show you. You will tell me, ah, cut. So I can do do this better. We gonna do this here in Italy. Uh, why not? <laughs> maybe it's this. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? No. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. This is a good uh, a good idea. I mean. Uh, uh, I on my uh, this is my position. I never think that I I am the best. I'm in doing something better than the other. I always look around, and looking around, uh, I try to find the best in everything I look, and then uh, I try to translate this uh, in something that is my job, making sales. So it's uh, it could be the same for the others, but uh, surely if you don't. You are not able to use uh, your hands in this job. Uh, it's totally difficult. It's really difficult to to be at the top. Yeah, yeah, and it's not it's not even Italy. It's just like this one region that uh, I don't know. The Ferrari factory is uh, two hours away from your factory, and I don't know, thirty minutes away from from the mast, like 
two of the biggest must factories in the world. And there is Lamborghini, there is, uh, I remember, I forget the name, but there's like multiple car manufacturers. So it's actually maybe just this one region you're born and you know that you're going to be working on, I don't know, producing some, some goods. I don't know, but, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's incredible. In Italy, we have a lot of, uh, creative people and a lot of, uh, engineering, a lot of, uh, fantasy in everything. So, uh, it, it's not difficult. You know, we come from the Romans, we come from, uh, Rinascimento, and this is uh, something maybe we have in the, the, in our DNA, even if, uh, naturally now every country, every, every the world is uh, one country. So uh, we exchange uh, all the, our experience with, uh, uh, for the with the rest of the world, and the, only with this is changing, we can uh, grow up. Absolutely, without your help, I can do anything. Without the help of other riders, uh, other brands can't work. And mostly of the of the best rider are not Italians. Is uh, this is something strange? We have a lot of top uh, brands, but uh, few top riders. Uh, not so many, Mo more, more than in the past, but uh, not so many like uh, the rest of the world is producing. Yeah. Yeah. But before the world was one country and probably 40 years ago, I guess, uh, this company, you, you started this, this company called Challenger Sales. So yeah. how, how did it actually start? What was the, the initiation? Uh, uh, I was, um, start sailing, uh, not so young. I was already 15, 14, 15. I don't remember very well. Uh, I, I was, uh, immediately felt in love with, uh, uh, with sailing. So, uh, there was a problem. The sales were mostly produced in outside Italy, the best sales. They were, if I don't make a mistake, they were North. They were Hellstrom, they were Mafia and I. These were the most famous brand coming from, yeah, from uh, US, from New Zealand, no, from yeah. the cost was very high. So me with my actual companion, Mario Miner and another guy, we were uh, uh, deciding to buy a sewing machine and to buy some meter of material, some uh, uh, other components of the seas, uh, start producing the seas for me. Uh, that was good. I was good in sailing. I was uh, in the Italian team, uh, uh, the rider that were with me in, uh, in that period now are in the top of the wars, uh, like America's Cup. But I decided to, um, uh, to take that, uh, that way of my life instead of, uh, uh, sailing, uh, going, producing sales and designing sales. So that was the beginning, like, uh, it was more a joke, more, uh, okay, we try. But uh, with my sale, I was uh, going on winning and uh, making good uh, results. So I said, uh, why don't we go on producing even for other? And then one sales after the other, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and in the meantime, like you say, sailing is is your first passion, and and you've been very competitive in sailing, and uh, and you know winning on your own designs, which must be must be an amazing uh, feeling. But at some point, windsurfing came along, and you decided also to make windsurfing sales. So why? I mean, it seems like sailing is a is a bit of a better business, maybe. Yeah. No, uh, in the period we were young, I was uh, 18, 20 years old. And um, it was, uh, it, they were the years uh, 90, 78, 79, 80, 90, 80, 1980. So uh, it, it was arriving from America, the first 10 kids. And the, it was a surprise for me. What is this? So I was uh, starting to using and then I was immediately, immediately understanding that, uh, wow, this is uh, fantastic, easy, cheap for everybody. The guys were getting crazy for this uh, uh, new uh, uh, material, new equipment to use in the, on the, in the world. So uh, I was saying to myself, and we decided nearly immediately to switch from uh, uh, sales for, uh, for yachts 
to sail for windsurfing. And uh, from that moment, from uh, the 80 to 90, we were really producing thousand thousand sales in loft. And we were growing up, winning a lot of regatta, even European Championship uh, with uh, people like, uh, you can remember, Fabio Balini or other big uh, racers in that time. And we were arriving even uh, the first time in the Aloha Classic that uh, we were winning the, the, the training, but uh, we were not allowed to participate to the regatta because at the time we were, were not brand registered for that kind of, uh, yeah. The, the, uh, yeah, it was the, probably PBA, no, or something, or I don't know. So we were not participating to the real regatta, but uh, Fabio was winning the training for uh, in, entering in that. So uh, we decided, that, okay, uh, this sport uh, will, will have a big success. I want to work with it because nobody, no other sail makers in Italy in that period were concentrated on windsurf. And this is, uh, was a good idea because uh, if I am here now, it's thanks to windsurfing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you ask um, people around, they will tell you that you don't windsurf, but actually... I know that you did windsurf uh, a little bit. So how, how, how good were you? And, and, and was it actually necessary to get that feeling to, to do the job you're doing now? Uh, I, I, this is, uh, who, who was that? <laughs> this is, it was something I was trying to hide uh, because uh, I was not absolutely so good in windsurfing like in, uh, in uh, sailing. Um, I, I wanted to try, as I told you, and then uh, to try, I was participating to some regatta, but uh, naturally not uh, international, just some uh, national or small regatta in 10 gates. In one, I was second. <laughs> Incredible. But no, uh, yeah, not bad, but it was a, easy, a small regatta. Absolutely not more than 20, 25 uh, windsurfers. But uh, as you, um, the reason why I was not going on, it, it was that. Because uh, uh, when I decided to, um, to, this, to, to make a sales in, in my life, uh, in the meantime, I was studying in the, in the university. I was making four years of university. And uh, uh, I had uh, to... To work, so there is no time for training. So first of all, I was uh, uh, starting to get not uh, as good results in sailing. In the last uh, championship, Italian championship, I was something like uh, 14, 15. That was incredible for me. There were uh, people that uh, I have never seen in uh, uh, some years before with me. Uh, competing and then now they were in front of me. So it was the time, the uh, understanding there was time to decide. I want, you want to sail racing or you want to work. And then he decided I want to work. But in the meantime, I was playing with uh, this windsurf and I was astonished. I was liking very much, but I didn't, uh, I was not going on for the same reason for uh, being at the top. You have to train a lot, to work a lot, to go around for regattas. And I was fully 100% concentrated on uh, if I, if, when I make a decision is important to leave the university after three years and to leave the regattas is not easy for me. It was not easy for me. But uh, I, I, sure. when you do something, you have to believe in what you do 100%, not 80% or something else. If you want to, and you know better than me, if, if you want to reach your target, you have to be fully in that. Uh, in that, uh, in that job, no, no, no other uh, things. So with windsurf, I was immediately starting working with the riders. At uh, the beginning was uh, Balini, for example, one of our magister that was giving us uh, the right ideas, the right uh, uh, develops on the sales. And then uh, till now, last one is a guy from Poland. Yeah, but in the like, like you say, you know, through the, through the eighties, uh, the sport was growing and kind of booming, you know, around, around Europe. Um, but most of the, of the development was probably in Hawaii, you know? Yeah. And do you remember how it was to, did you feel that you were kind of a step 
behind with that because there was a lot of new things coming, new type of tops, uh, the rigid front of the sail that I, I don't remember how the, you know, first, of course, buttons and, and monofilm instead of Dacron and, you know, different materials and X-ply and this and that. How do you remember this time when all these innovations were, were coming through and were actually not coming from, from Europe, from what I understand, they were kind of developed uh, overseas? There was a stop. I don't understand. Uh, uh, the last words were in Maui. Yeah, that you, you know, that probably a lot of those things. Repeat this uh, question, uh, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. But they, they, the line was out. Yeah. So uh, how do you remember that time, you know, like 80s through the 80s into early 90s that windsurfing was booming and the innovations were, were coming uh, you know, one after the other, first buttons, then, uh, I don't know, monofilm, uh, X-ply, different, you know, different tops, like rigid front, some gimmicks, some things that really innovated the sport. But a lot of those things were coming, I guess, from Hawaii, right? And, and you were, you were in Italy. How, how do you remember that time? Did you feel like a little bit one step behind or uh, how, how it was uh, from your perspective? No, 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 no. We were not never behind because, uh, as I told you, when I work hundred uh, percent one thing, I organize everything. So every year, every time there were guys from uh, Italy or from our riders, I mean, in a way, uh, sometimes even for three months. So in there, we were always looking around. We were studying, and I was having uh, big, uh, the big ideas. Uh, the beginning, like Morpho. Morpho sail was the first uh, wave sails with the fat heads. Nobody was talking about, uh, but uh, we were thinking in there. And uh, it was uh, something uh, really new in the uh, windsurfing panorama. Because till that moment, all the seas, even in Hawaii, were triangular. Similar to uh, both sails uh, with a, 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 a small angle in the top, long boom, uh, very powerful, difficult to control, difficult to jibe. Uh, and the, if you look at uh, the regatta of the time in Hawaii, the, the big uh, fighting between Anders Springdal and Bjorn Ankenberg or, uh, or uh, Robin Esch, you see this is and this and you ask, wow, how can they go uh, in that uh, kind of condition with that uh, equipments, with that sales? Looking what is uh, uh, now uh, the the develop now. So um, I was always looking, and for me, for me, uh, that period was very important because it was really the, from the beginning to the ninety, the years of the continuous. Uh, uh, develop continuous uh, um, uh, new things. For example, the biggest uh, difference, uh, the biggest uh, develop was uh, cumbers, uh, cumbers inducers. Fatet, Fatet was uh, incredibly important. I was having the idea. Uh, and then uh, for me, it was uh, uh, something for uh, a wave. But uh, suddenly, uh, I don't remember exactly the date in Lake Garda. There was uh, an international regatta. I was there, and there was a young, uh, not Dutch, Dutch was Dutch, guy with a uh, knee pride, uh, I remember. And uh, the guy was uh, Bjorn Dankeber. I, I suppose he was something like 14, 15. And he was having a new slalom seas with a big, big head, a short boom. I would say, wow. How can he control? I like, can be, I uh, can go upwind. Uh, it's impossible to use. Uh, uh, the sail uh, will be stable, blah, blah, blah. And then I was uh, understanding the guy was winning everything. <laughs> and they said, Oh, should be the guy is very, very good, but probably there is something interesting to, to see. And then I was understanding that all the things we have in the boat to change, to open the leech, uh, like Vang, uh, like uh, other other uh, things that you can do in the boat, it's impossible to do to make in uh, windsurfing because you are there in your boom. There is not a lot to work with. So the big fat head was uh, giving the possibility to the sail working in the wind 
uh, on yeah, the, for the, the leech to open, yeah. Yeah, the short boom was uh, making easier jive and everything. So in that years, there were the real develop. After, big things were monofilm, as you said now. Monofilm, for me, is still the best. It's still the best because uh, it put together uh, lightness, it put together uh, even easy way for repairing. If you break one um, uh, uh, panel in monofilm, you can check with, uh, uh, without destroying totally the, the design of the sail. For, for me, mostly it's reactivity. Every other, every other material I tried is just not as reactive, you know, as the monofilm. When you hit a gust, the monofilm just accelerates like, like crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, for example, the materials in the oriented line, we were uh, in, in between the first to use it uh, because we made the first sales uh, eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, when uh, North was coming out with the first uh, uh, molded sales. But uh, what happened? Uh, uh, the first sales were first fastly delaminating. And uh, mine too, after a couple of years, they were de starting to delaminate because uh, when you stitch the sail, it's natural that the, the needle go through and then it is, uh, uh, it, when they touch one line, this line into the water is uh, taking water. So inside, in high temperature, maybe into the car, it becomes rapport and then it starts delaminating in that point. So yeah, after, you're, you're talking about the 3DI molded sails, yeah, right? Yeah. Molded uh, uh, oriental lines, I call. So uh, in the end, I decided to stop because it's not easy to sell sails that cost incredibly. One way sails cost uh, 1,000, 1,100 sails. For me, it's out of mind. Uh, after three years, you have to throw away. Or if you fall down, you break it, uh, you can't fix it uh, without uh, um, reducing the value of uh, 90%. Not good. Not good. And then uh, it's not the effect of, the, of lightness because the reality of the lightness is reducing the, the patches. But uh, in the end, it is 50 grams. And then uh, it's not for me acceptable to for that for 50 grams you have to spend four or five hundred euro more and after three years the sales is to throw away it's not uh, acceptable so i stopped i stopped working in that uh, direction and uh, now i'm uh, really totally focused on uh, monofilm and x-play but uh, the x-play uh, industrial x-play that does not delaminate yeah 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 and what about like so we went through a little history of development of the of the stuff, you know, but what about the stuff that was like a gimmick, like, you know, wow, new thing, but you straight away thought, ah, this is stupid, this is dumb, you know, like some some sort of, you know, innovation that never really made any sense, but sold a lot of sales anyway. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, designing the first sales in... Uh, uh, naturally, the curve of mast was not uh, like uh, today. Uh, they were more straight. So naturally, these leeches were really Flop, not... Flopping around, yeah. And uh, the regatta were normally uh, upwind, downwind, or something like that, like uh, uh, triangular, like uh, sailing regattas. There was not slalom downwind. So what's happened that uh, when you go upwind, you need a close leech. When you go downwind, you need to open the leech. So I was uh, putting in the top, in between uh, the, the last button, the top button and uh, the top of the mast, I was cutting like a V and putting a kind of a system that you can close or open depending on the wind. So the lighter was the wind, you can close you know, we have more powerful in your hand, and then the sail is uh, like bigger because in the top uh, the ditch is more closed. When the wind was strong, you open this part, and then uh, you have the leech easier, in, uh, like it, it is uh, uh, less big because you reduce this part is totally uh, opened, so it's not pushing, and in the end you have uh, uh, your uh, uh, power more 
lower and easy control. There was another brand looking at mine. It was making the same V in the bottom, close to the to the tack. Yeah, tack strap. <laughs> yeah. straight, pulling the tack, you can close the leech. It was true, but the effect was another. That uh, pulling down, you increase the profile of the sails under the boom, so the sails is a little bit more powerful. The reality was that everybody was using that brand with the, that system. Everybody was pulling totally it, because if you leave a little bit, a lot of wrinkles were starting, and the sail was uh, ugly to see and impossible to use. So in the reality, it was just to have a cut close, always close. It's like to have a zip, always close, and you use like a normal pullover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was easy for me. Uh, the, naturally, this was done because uh, this thing was interesting and was new, but nobody wanted to show that uh, they were copying me, uh, just a small <laughs> seal maker, uh, uh, doing something different, but totally for me, uh, an acceptable or no profit of that on that. Yeah. What about the... Um there was this thing you did with uh, hero sails, which was like a double sided rigid profile in the front. So right now we have a, uh, like right now the racing sails, they are, um, they are two layers in the front, right? It's a big, big button, big, uh, left sleeve, but, uh, that one had, um, yeah, had had a double profile, so it was. Um, I don't know how to how to say for the people that will only listen and not uh, not watch um, to to explain. But basically, like a, yeah, like a wing, like a wing sail. So the front, so the front had a was fully like a wing, and then only the back of the sail was. And and this in in physics, in theory, it's an amazing, it's an amazing invention, right? So why do you think this didn't catch on? Well, you know, I have been working for six years, not one, in the, in a project that, that was making the double profile. But uh, in the end, um, the real problem is this, that you can do it if you, uh, if the seas can rotate around something that is straight. When you have a curve, every rotation is doing something like this. So when you jibe, when you change from uh, starboard to tack, the sail is uh, working, and then uh, the, you see the tension lines every time you change your uh, uh, position uh, from tack to starboard or, or the contrary. And this effect is uh, the begin, becoming bigger and bigger. The bigger are the must live. So the good thing is to find the right uh, solution for having a big mast leave that works perfectly on, a, on the curve of the mast. This is really important. Uh, double sails uh, are a kind of problem of double sails is the weight. You have uh, uh, everything is double. And inside double you buttons, have... Yeah. Or even if the button are... Uh, are one you have uh, like one sail inside with the two cover outside i did it for under spindle in uh, in speed it was good it was working working very well but naturally you can do in speed because you have uh, the wind from uh, one side you have not too shy but to come back so for example in slalom is impossible you should have these two uh, uh, application what can i say yeah these two uh um, covers uh, in one side and on the other side. Imagine the weight of everything. Imagine how difficult it is to rig a rig. And then if you fall down, all the water inside is a, is a trouble. Is a trouble. But I suppose that now at the moment, uh, the level uh, we produce uh, foil and slalom says is really, really the top. The top. Difficult to find something better. It just... Uh, in, in this moment, we work more on the shape of the seas, more on the outline of the seas, but uh, the quality and the speed that we can can get is uh, the top. Is the top? 
Yeah, yeah. When I talked with a with an America's Cup uh, designer that designed uh, American Magic, um, he he told me that when he looks at windsurfing, he sees problems in the in the boards and in the foils, like with with how how everything is a little bit unstable and whatever. And he says like, yeah, but your sails look really efficient. He says so. So I think there's there's got to be something to it. Um, in the past, sorry, uh, Magic. In the past, we were um, working together uh, in a, um, uh, for America's Cup too. Some ideas, for example, the inflatable buttons were coming from uh, our idea, my idea. They were not uh, knowing how can you can make because if you remember, you maybe you were you were too young. Uh, the first uh, um, America's uh, Cup sales uh, with fat heads were breaking the top buttons always, even if they were in carbon, full carbon, like uh, three centimeter camber, cam, um, carbon uh, tubes. Uh, they were breaking and uh, the regatta were finishing uh, uh, 50% of the cases with one man in the top that uh, push the <laughs> broken button, not to destroy the sail, imagine. So, uh, which could be the idea, which could be the idea. In the end, the idea was uh, to make a kind of uh, tubes with air, uh, with uh, five atmosphere inside. But what happened? That when you make this tube, how to connect the tubes, these tubes that you pump with the air. To uh, the sail, with, yeah. Yes, how can you? Because when you pump, immediately they uh, break the stitching after a while and then uh, nothing. So I was uh, find a solution using a kind of a round material stitched and then uh, putting the round material with the tubes inside to inflate, stitched in, uh, on the top and then another, they go through on the bottom and the seas were working. So uh, the first regatta of the Italian team uh, uh, it Italia from Sicily was uh, using this uh, thanks to my idea. I was uh, working with the same maker. Naturally, it was the Italian North same maker in that time. North is uh, making 90% of the sales on America's Cup since, yeah. uh, since a long time. Yeah. What about the future of sale design? Like when you think about 20 years from now, um, because everything is going way more efficient and efficient and more towards what engineers would think an ideal sale would be, right? Because the level of the competitors is getting higher and the level of, of technology is getting higher, materials and everything. So where, where do you think uh, windsurfing sales, what do you think windsurfing sales will look like in, in let's say, 20 years? No, I suppose that the design now is... Um is um, difficult to beat. I mean, uh, uh, looking at the, the airplane, looking at the, the wings of the, the birds, you see now our seas are similar. You can put horizontal to, and you can uh, fly, maybe. So uh, for me, the evolution will be lot, lot in the choices of materials uh, to make it lighter, but in, in the meantime, stronger, not elastic, like uh, it can happen uh, Reactive, with yeah. uh, the oriental lines and molded the oriental lines. They are not so stiff. And um, a lot of work will be made on the, on the other part, not aerodynamic, but hydrodynamic in the water with the foil. With the foil, uh, we can beat all the records on the, and you know, there is a project that is working on that direction. And um, I suppose that uh, from now on, the big develop will be made uh, on the uh, foils because the seas are already prepared to give uh, more power and more speed. But uh, it's like uh, to have a big uh, Ferrari engine, but you don't have uh, the right uh, um, uh, combine with the rest of the car, and uh, you don't you produce three hundred uh, horses, and in the reality you can use only two hundred. 
for for me this is uh, what we have to work on and then uh, the the yeah this sport the level of this sport will grow up a lot a lot a lot uh, in in a very very fast uh, short times in very short times yeah it's a, it's already doing that it's already doing that for sure slowly um sail designing is it more like because you mentioned like birds and planes and different things for inspiration is it more like uh engineering and math and you know you would think that these days it's you know because it's all computer programmed and or is it more like art that you go with feeling with the curves that look nice and clean and and things like that yes uh, as as we were talking at the, in the beginning of this interview it is uh, something in between you cannot be an engineer and uh, produce something extraordinary for me you can be an artist without any idea or how to do it so uh, the best sail maker is the one that is knowing exactly what technically do but is using uh, the feeling when you see one say sometimes uh, when you talk about uh, claudio we can change this and this and this sometimes uh, i i i immediately feel that uh, you are seeing something interesting or not immediately and sometimes i believe uh, you ask me to do something i do but uh, most of the time you tell me oh we go back sometimes we you say to me we go back because it's correct to try to do uh, every uh, possibility every chance to to see if there is but uh, i have the feeling sometimes that uh, uh, some things are not good when uh, other things sometimes immediately when you tell me one concept i immediately have the feeling of what you say and i translate in uh, your guest in something real in a sale yeah yeah English. this is the, i think this is a very interesting topic what you just said like these days we work together right and i come to you with an idea let's say that i think of that could be interesting let's say I don't know. I say um I think if I if I if I get more leverage from the sail I will be able to use smaller fins, right? So let's maybe add a little bit of power on the you know above the boom to get that more leverage because I will be able to use a smaller fin and everything that's in the water is is much, you know, causes much more drag than in the air, so so then maybe that way I will go faster. Let's say let's say you get an idea like this for me. How do you translate and let's say that you believe also in this idea because that's also another thing that you mentioned. But how do you translate something like this into the actual design that you have to sit in front of the computer and the numbers they actually have to work with each other? Um it's not so difficult it's uh, very easy for me. Yeah, it's uh, 40 years I'm doing each part of the series to charge on your guest. For example, the regest you were saying before, you know exactly where I have to put more power or more shape or bigger uh mass leave or uh on the contrary opening the leech or giving you more power in the back end or less power in the back end. So, when you ask me something, this is really important. I know exactly I touch this and that. So, you go in the water and mostly of the time we get uh, the, uh, the result uh not easy uh, this is easy when you make something new there is a lot of work to do like the first uh, voices uh, we were starting and uh, immediately we understood that, that there is to work but uh, when after 2 uh, 3 years you work and you arrive to a very good a very good quality a very good performing performances Uh, is difficult so every change is uh, to be considered uh, have to be calculated uh, i do it uh, because you have always to consider that uh, sailing uh, not only when surfing is something that uh, you can have uh, the perfect sail because uh, there is a uh, one time there is a kind of wind kind of waves a kind of temperature uh, a kind of uh, um mast you can change the mast so different uh, kind of rider 
you are not the same rider that uh, could be another guy who uh, 110 kilos. You are not uh, uh, Finn and Miner, for example. So on these different things, we have to find a kind of solution that can be the best in the middle. So you have not to see the uh, half uh, full glass of wine or half uh, empty glass of wine. Because every time we do something in one direction, we miss something else in uh, the other direction. So every every time I, I try to uh, find a solution that we discuss together, I have always to think about uh, what is the, uh, the final, the final, um, use you have to do with that sale. This is important. So at the beginning, if you remember, we were starting with the foiling, foils of 10 meters. Now it's crazy. Nobody is using 10 meters in regattas. And now you fly faster and easier with the seven notes with the nine one instead of a 10, and they will uh, produce minimum three knots more than two years ago. That is uh, normal. But um, uh, yeah, the really important thing is uh, how the feeling with uh, the people you work with. So every time you say something to me, I have, uh, in, in my mind, there is uh, already an idea. There is a design of the sail. I see the shape. I see how it's coming out, the layout. And then I start working and naturally starting with, with from something we have. We don't start from zero every time because it takes too much. And uh, in the end, we arrive uh, to our guest. I remember last time when you were asking, uh, we have a uh, sale is good, this sale is good. Uh, every time I start together with the other, I arrive uh, at the jibe, first jibe, if I start well, few meters in front of them. And then I, I feel that I can win. And then he said, but with the 7-7, seven, seven, I still <laughs> arrived together. <laughs> what can you do? I, I was to say, yeah, it's not so easy. Much <laughs> to produce this, that you arrive at the, at the first job in front of uh, uh, Matteo Iacchino, in, in front of uh, uh, Mort Reform, in, in front of all the best rider, Antoine. <laughs> it's not so easy. But uh, we are working uh, well. Correct. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And you are also not a big fan of making, you know, 10 prototypes per size uh, with random changes. You are more the guy that, you know, puts a lot of thought into every prototype. And, and in effect, actually, most of the time, every, pretty much every time, I can't remember the last time that, that we did a bad prototype or you did a bad prototype. So how you know how does it how does it work for you to to implement sometimes quite a lot of changes into one sale and then still keep the good characteristics because you don't want to miss you know whatever is good about the sale yeah uh, if you remember this was um, uh, at the beginning of our uh, cooperation collaboration was uh, uh, the reason some fight you were asking for, you, I make uh, four prototypes of uh, eight, four, four prototypes of seven, eight, and then I taste and then I said, no, I don't work like that. And you were angry because you were thinking that I don't want to make prototype. No, because you know why? Because when we test our gear, the number yeah. one, the number one rule when I test for my PWA season is I only change one thing at a time just to understand what that thing really changes, you know? And then all of a sudden I sign with you and you tell me, no, no, we change eight things in the sale, you know? And then I was astonished because it worked every fucking time, you know? So, <laughs> no, no, as I told you, I am not going random. I am, I know exactly. So when you use one sale and you tell me which are the good things and the things to change in one sale, I know exactly uh, what to do. Uh, I mean, I, I have in my mind was do naturally there is always you that have to taste and to say, okay, or still something to do. So instead of making three, four, five, and then you go in the water, you say, I prefer number three is the best. You are choosing the best on four 
pieces on for sales. On the other way of, on, on my way of working, you start for one sale. You tell me what you want and what you would like to uh, uh, to increase in the performances, and I make another prototype. You try that prototype against the first one, and you said you tell me something else to do, and then it's a step by step. In the end, you have, a, for example, proper prototypes, but the last one is having all the. Um, uh, the, all the increasing in performances, all the technician change that you were asking from the beginning. Maybe we arrive in three, maybe we arrive immediately, but always we go on to verify if he is doing. You, you know better than me. This year was uh, that direction. Sometimes in, in reality, we always arrive till the last day of the deadline. So <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not me. It's not me. You better than me. Uh, without uh, your uh, uh, consideration, you, without your feedback, I can do anything. I can do anything because uh, uh, we need uh, the feedback of the the best guy. Uh, of, of your team riders naturally to understand uh, which is the right direction. If you tell me suddenly, I want reduce, uh, for example, the mass leave, uh, close the leech, and uh, uh, don't uh, have a big uh, exposition in the bottom. For me, it's crazy, for example, for foiling, but uh, I do. Then you will explain to me why, and then I try to do. But uh, uh, in the end, you have to make this is against the other. And this is the reality. You have uh, uh, your uh, GPS to say which is the faster. And, we, uh, and uh, you have the feeling to say, okay, is better or worse. This is the reality. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, it's kind of, it, it's purely teamwork because the designer needs the rider and the rider needs the designer. But from a designer standpoint, what would you say is the impact of like a designer and a rider on a sale in the, in percent? Let's say that you would say this, yeah, this is 90% the, the designer or this is, uh, you know, 70% uh, the rider. Or... Much again, okay. suppose uh, it, it is 50%, 50% because, uh, um, uh, even if I, I, even if I wear a uh, windsurfer, I cannot be as good as uh, the top riders. I cannot. So I could be a good, a good free uh, ride sale designer if I consider my uh, opinion and my choices on making the sales. So I am not that, and uh, I need people like you that uh, we have the right feeling now. Every time you say something to me, you tell me in the right way, and I understand exactly what you say. So in the end, uh, uh, the result is not 100% uh, sure, but uh, I must say that working with you is a pleasure. Likewise, likewise, for sure. So you worked before me and also during with some uh, some amazing accomplished riders, actually. Anders Bringdal, Pascal Toselli, Matteo Iacchino, Alex Mussolini, Danny Bruch, just to name a few, there was, there was way, way more. Um, which one do you think taught you or, he or helped you move the product along the most? And maybe which one was the hardest to work with? Because with, for example, with Anders, I know you had quite a, quite a long, uh, and good development really? project, right? Three, three years of a good work. Uh, I must say that Anders uh, was um, coming by me in the, in the right moment. I, I was uh, in a crisis moment uh, because uh, uh, our, uh, uh, there was a period between uh, um, uh, the years 90 to 2000 and uh, uh, there was the starting of kite, so uh, windsurf was uh, a little bit in crisis, and uh, all of us were uh, a little bit. Uh, what uh, what is the direction? Leave the windsurf designing uh, uh, kites. I did it. I was designing kites for two years, and um, 
and this was taking me back in the right direction. It was uh, full of uh, experience. I was working with the biggest brands like uh, Nash, the Pride at the moment were the top. And uh, was uh, away from the regatta for two years working in China. I was back and saying, no, I want to do something important. I have uh, to come back. I want to make uh, uh, speed, uh, blah, blah, blah. So it was coming by me. And in the beginning, always uh, uh, the feeling is not immediate. He is a Swedish and he is uh, always uh, uh, coming to you like, uh, wow, we are the top. You are Italian. Let Show me what are you able to do. In the meantime, I was... Uh, uh, a small brand. So talking with me to a person that uh, was uh, talking with uh, Rob Stroy, Robin Nash, uh, or the same maker of Robin Nash, it's not easy. It's not easy because uh, you risk that uh, you are considered uh, from him and then from everybody, not as good as uh, the other. When he was arriving, he was saying to me, I want to, I have some idea of a new sales with a front shape, big front shape at the moment, even racing seas, all the slalom racing seas were very flat. Backhanded, Lar yeah. Larger, larger uh, mass leave, larger, I mean like this, uh, normal uh, no cams was like this, with the cams was uh, 40 centimeter maximum. Now we are about 90 or one meter. And I was saying, I wanted a, a big shape in the front. I want the sales that uh, push me. I feel the the, the strength. The drive. The drive. Yeah. Backhand. And uh, I was thinking, I think, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? He was explaining, explaining, ringing the sale he was having. In the end, uh, in one week, he was arriving on Monday and going away that Saturday. I was making a set of sales completely different. We were... Uh, changing, stitching, uh, and stitching, uh, uh, cutting, uh, making few different things. And in the end, he was going away, telling me, oh, yes, I have to test uh, in, uh, in uh, France, in Marignan, he lives, I don't remember. And then I let you know. So he was going away naturally, like in front of an exam. A few days ago, a few days after, he was calling me, and he said, Claudio, but where you come from? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? You have done, you don't understand what you have done. What I've done, uh, Anders, you have done something that nobody till now was able to do on my request. You have done exactly what I was asking for. The sales are great. The sales are wonderful. And then that year he was making, he was uh, winning the um, world tour of speed, uh, uh, Andrea Baldini was uh, winning the European Speed uh, uh, Championship and uh, the sale was incredibly fast. And that was the beginning of the new uh, uh, way of designing for me. So with his help, I, I, till now, thanks to him, to be in part, have been part of uh, Challenger Series of our team and uh, giving me another thing not only the ideas, it was given to me the, uh, what can I say? Uh, the motivation, the, the inspiration. Autoesteem, auto the autoesteem. My autoesteem was growing up. So I was understanding that uh, between me and uh, the main uh, uh, sale makers of the other brand, brands, there was not uh, such a big uh, difference or a big step but we were in the same level. Or maybe could be in something, something better. Uh, in that period, I was uh, uh, coming out with the idea of the S shape. It was always saying to me, I feel too much uh, power, too much strength on the back end when I go. I need lightness because the seat must push up, not from the back. And I was thinking and thinking and thinking. So with the S shape, I was... Uh, taking away the, the spoon that you have, we're having in that sales, we're talking about 20 years ago on the back part on the leech especially, and to have the perfectly under the effect of the wind, the perfect shape I want, the perfect NACA uh, or NASA, now is NASA, uh, shape I, I want.
that was uh, really something interesting to work with Anders. Yeah, now this S shape is pretty much industry standard. Big, a big experience and a lot of brain in that man. Yeah, yeah. So Anders was the best. Who was the worst? Oh, <laughs> uh, not uh, not so easy, but uh, not worse. Uh, it was the the man that was uh, making me crazy because I uh, was uh, uh, saying sometimes I need this, uh, and then when I was doing this, no, it's not that uh, we are not understood. I was needing another thing, and then another, another, another. In the end, who, what is the best? Uh, I don't know was the answer, but uh, he was the, probably the most talentous, the most talentous and was not giving uh, the best in results in his life. He could have been a world champion and that he, he is Pascal Toselli. Tos, Pascal is, uh, is a good man, he's a wonderful guy, he's, uh, now he's having a bad period, I, I give him all uh, the luckiness he can have, but um, really he was uh, taking out of uh, his possibility only maybe 50%, but it could have been uh, much, much better. Yeah, but, uh, he was leading. I remember he was leading uh, with Challenger. He was leading the event in Fuerte and then uh, he he dislocated his shoulder. Uh, but think about it, that in that uh, in that year, he was a third in the, in the classify. And uh, in Tenerife, I suppose he was in uh, Regatta in Canary. He was... Uh, in, 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 a in Fuerte, in Fuerte, yeah. He dislocated his shoulder, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, he was missing that regatta, the regatta after in the north of France. And the last regatta, with three regatta less, in the end, it was 11th. With uh, eight events, so he was making five. On eight, it was uh, 11th, but nobody was uh, understanding that uh, that was yeah. incredible. It was uh, with the three event not done, you are still nearly in the first end. Uh, it was incredible. But uh, yeah, it was even uh, an unlucky man. Yeah, it was probably one of the naturally fastest uh, windsurfers. Like, uh, so amazing, amazing, so fast. No. I mean, uh, he, he, he's using the feet more better than the ends. So it's really... The feeling he has with the board, the feeling he has with the equipment is something very, very special. He's a, a wonderful guy, wonderful guy. Yeah, yeah. No matter whether, you know, you, you always, from day one, you treat your riders like family. Even the, the WhatsApp group we have is called uh, CHS Family. And sometimes, you know, people leave for different reasons or or you cannot find budget for for somebody or you know things like that and and now you're facing this situation where uh, one of your riders even though he's signed for 2022 decided to leave break his contract and leave and the whole thing might end up in court and you know it's it might get a little bit ugly we cannot really mention the name because of because of these things, legal things, but, um, but it will probably sooner or later come out. Uh, how does that make you feel? Can you, can you understand the perspective of, of a rider like this? I mean, he got a, he got a big offer. I don't know if it's a big offer, but he got an offer from big brands, let's say, uh, you know, very mainstream, mainstream brands. Uh, I am a, a bit. In uh, 40 years, you can understand that, that uh, you are a small brand and every time you are under attack of uh, the biggest brand because they try to stop you to have a success. And um, they don't understand some uh, writers that uh, with the success, uh, we can reach each other. Uh, the success is for both. So uh, the, the final results in every in a result of regatta, in result of uh, economical result, and everything is for for buff. I, I will not become rich with this work. But uh, what can I say? I am uh, regarding this last thing. I am more not disappointed, more uh, more worried, uh, more uh, sad, more sad for him, because uh, naturally, when you sign a contract with someone, I always respect the contract. Always, you know better than me. 
So uh, if you start in your life and you sign a contract that then you don't respect, you miss a lot, a lot of uh, your credibility in the in this uh, habitat we can call habitat, and um, you miss a lot as a man. Uh, for me, it's really important. Uh, I can go around always with uh, my head up. And this is the most important thing for me. It's not uh, how much money is in your pocket. It's not uh, how, how good are you in your results, are you, how good are you as a, a windsurfer, for example. But uh, you have always to go around with your head up. And this is uh, something that will, is making me sad regarding this uh, position. Uh, he, maybe he's not understanding uh, that he has done something really bad for him. Uh, not considering uh, all the rest, regardless of results, it's not important. But uh, I'm sad for him, really. Yeah. I Let's mean, see. It's still not, uh, nothing is still decided. I haven't seen anything around. Could be that we are totally wrong and uh, you shot your head and then... Uh, Everything is uh, like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I hope so. You, you mentioned like small brands versus big brands. What do you think is necessary for, for a brand like Challenger that has been, let's say, a small brand uh, in, in inverted commas um, for, I don't know, 30 years now to become one of the, the big brands? What? Because product is one thing, right? In the in the in the windsurfing business. So now, Claudio, the the owner, the brand manager. Uh, yeah. What do you think is uh, is the yeah is the requirement? You know, we are uh, missing uh, a lot on the, all the part that is managing and uh, uh, marketing. Uh, it is uh, something we miss. Uh, we have tried to find a solution uh, a few years ago with another brand, but um, still um, this is what uh, what is missing. Mostly because 90% uh, of the work is made um, in total by me and another person. Uh, the, the real step must be this. We have to grow up in a new direction and uh, naturally this uh, can um, uh, for me, it must change a little bit uh, the mentality of uh, the people all around the world. When you consider and you look mostly at um, the, uh, the marketing on a product more than uh, uh, the reality of the product, what you have in your hand, uh, you understand that, that you, you can win uh, five uh, World Cup that you will never go up. But uh, at the moment, it's still like that. The, what is a change in the last uh, three years is that uh, we are going around the world a little something in there, something there, something the other side of the world. And every people that is using or start using our sales, even if uh, we are working since 43 years, <laughs> it's seven, we're 78, so it's no 44 now, 44 years. Uh, there is people, oh, I want to taste, I want to see, and uh, everybody's happy. Everybody's saying, wow, uh, wh where they were till now, in, in far away from here, from Europe. So um, we are growing, we are growing. And the, the way we are growing is a good way because it's not... Organically, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's not just because of the fashion or just because uh, magic is winning or someone else is winning something that tomorrow you can uh, be with someone else so we can go down suddenly. You can be uh, World Cup today and after two years, not in the first ten. It means that the product has some problem. And the result is due only on the capacity on the, uh, of, the, of the rider. So if, um, uh, if we consider that, it's good. Naturally, naturally uh, this uh, kind of uh, growing up uh, is taking uh, time. And uh, I would like, uh, I, I, I feel a little bit tired to wait and wait and wait. And sometimes, like now, someone is going away and they have to restart. There was no 
no strength in the people that we have been together till now. Uh, let's see, let's see. But uh, I, I feel uh, we have the right person inside with us. And the family is just because we are mafia house. So our is uh, always a family. <laughs> I'm joking. <Yeah. laughs> it's, a, it's a funny place. A lot of people is uh, is like a part of the family. It's a, I stood to be in that group. Maybe that's not a bad idea to call the team for marketing instead of uh, the team, you call it the mafia. That would be pretty Italian, you know. Mafia, mafia team. Yeah, yeah, you will have a lot of troubles on, on every iPod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so you mentioned the marketing and, and this was supposed to be kind of solved with a, a partnership that you had with, um, with Point Seven, For a moment there, it's, this is, for example, how I found about Challenger products was actually by trying Point Seven products, you know, um, because the designs for, for a moment, for I, I guess it was like four, four years or something, um, you guys were working together with Point Seven, and uh, you were designing the point seven sales, uh, basically it was pretty much the same designs as challenger and, and point seven was doing your marketing and, you know, was managing more the, the business side, let's say. Why you think it ultimately didn't work for, for the long run at least. Yeah. Uh, the idea at the beginning was that exactly. Uh, could be we could have been uh, really unbeatable because uh, on their side uh, there was a marketing uh, at the top levels. On my on my side, I suppose I am a good designer. We were winning the World Cup with my design, so I don't have uh, to show a lot more. But uh, in the end, as I told you, in the end of everything, there is. Uh, Correctness and honesty. When this is missing for me, is not. There is nothing else to say. It's a past story. It's finished. Uh, I go on with the new companions, and they want to to get the results that they could have had uh, five years ago. But uh, I still believe, and I put more strength on getting now. Yeah, clearly you don't want to talk about it uh, in uh, too much. So, so let's move on to, to more, uh, more something that is maybe more exciting, uh, for you. If you had to put a list, um, of like top three, top five designers, uh, that you take the most inspiration or that you consider to be the best, who would you, who would you put? Yeah, 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 absolutely. For me, uh, Robert Stroy, I like. I like everything he does. Uh, he has, uh, is he is the right concept of designer. He has uh, the full team working with him for designing, nothing else. So the best rider, I come into you, the best freestyler, the best uh, slalom rider, the best formula rider, for example. And uh, everybody is uh, giving the right direction to take and is fully concentrated, 100%. When you do this for many years, you can make uh, mistakes. Naturally, there is up and down in your life. Uh, sometimes you come out with something really unbeatable, other times is something in the middle. But absolutely, I consider him, uh, yeah, uh, the top. Uh, on the other end, I have a kind of a special uh, uh, um, consideration with Monty, Monty Spindra. And uh, I believe that uh, is the same for him. I, I am um, considering uh, Monty one of the best riders. He has had a uh, lot of troubles and uh, now it's different. Uh, things are a little bit different. Maybe he was not putting, he was not able to put 100% of his uh, strength uh, on uh, on the job in the in the last few years, but for me is uh, one top designer, especially in correctness. Especially in correctness. One time uh, I met him in, um, uh, in when uh, there was ARTCs. You remember? I met yes. him in Munich, and I was there 
talking to him, I said, wow, these are all the line, looking at the line of says, which one is your? And he was honestly was saying, no one, no one. He was only making some prototype, but in the end, there is a cell maker in China that is uh, making the decision uh, what to do or not to do. So I am a kind of a uh, um, uh, tester, what can I say? And then uh, I am at their face in Tormoli. If this was the time it was in Tormoli. Then he was going to Tarifa, he was going up and making, for me, seven, eight years ago, the best sales were uh, loft sales. Absolutely best. Well, the sales that uh, were using Ben van der Steen, Pascal Toselli, a lot of good riders were at the top with the sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and designers, do they have, like you have a special, you know, special appreciation for Monty or, or for Robert. Do you guys talk like, I don't know, Hey, Robert, did you see what, uh, I don't know, did you see this new North sales, for example, or did you see this new technology or, or when you see each other, do you exchange ideas? Like, you know, sometimes there is a special connection, like between, uh, between, for example, World Cup windsurfers, there is a certain understanding, you know, certain similar type of thinking synergy. Do you have that with, with other designers? No, this is uh, something really strange. Uh, never, 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 never. Sometimes like, uh, yeah, last time I saw, I was talking to uh, Montley was, I suppose, uh, more than 10 years ago, but more. Uh, sometimes can look, could have happened uh, with uh, Morlotti, but uh, even a um, lot of years ago. There is something like um, uh, jealousy, I suppose. I don't know. Nobody wants to talk to the other. Uh, everybody of us are waiting for a call from someone else. Like, uh, okay, you want to know something? Call me. But uh, in the reality, if we could meet each other, probably, probably, uh, all the equipment will be easier for everybody. Maybe we can arrive uh, to three or maximum four uh, rigs instead of six, seven. And uh, uh, finding a good solution, uh, the best solution for racing or for other things. But uh, in this way, everybody is going for their way. Now there are people, designers, that make only sales for foil. Others that uh, still work uh, mostly on uh, fin instead of foil. So when you arrive to the regatta, like this year, Israel, uh, if you were having the the designer that was putting all the pot on uh, on foil was the winner. If the regatta was, uh, the only regatta would have been, I don't know, in Zil, probably, <laughs> the the foil designer were a little bit back. So it's, uh, life is luckiness sometimes, but if there is no, um, no kind, any kind of a connection between, uh, uh, between us. Yeah. And you mentioned Robert and having the right concept behind the brand and having the right, you know, like top riders come and whatever. Do you believe that, do you sometimes have this, like, I don't know, you look at a, a team, uh, it's successful, but you're like, oh, okay, this guy is just has the best riders and has the most budget and and can have a really good uh, really good sale but it's not actually a good designer is that possible like to cover a little bit of of problems from the designer by you know by having the best team the best budget the best you know mm, environment absolutely uh, people like you, like uh, the top three, like uh, at the moment, people like Jordi Bonk, uh, many other um, between the first ten different is so small, you know, better than me. Uh, sometimes uh, these uh, guys are able to cover uh, some missing. Absolutely. I know, I know that uh, there is someone this year, especially was lucky that the regatta were not so many, uh, was having trouble with the equipment, uh, was, uh, was fighting, fighting and fighting to be not in the first three, but maybe in the first five, six. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's always better 
to have a good rider. Without that rider, you are not. Uh, it, it, it is something that was happening when there is no developing uh, in designing sales. You can have one year the top the World Cup winner. Maybe the, the, the year after the rider is arrived on second, the, that rider is going away, and the year after you don't have another rider in the first ten. What does it mean? It's not difficult to understand. Have a look and think about. So, if there is develop, but on, not only in the seas, in foil, in boards, in fins, in everything, in masts. If there is no develop, after a few years, you must cover this uh, uh, missing only with the good rider. But the good rider, in the meantime, when he understands that the results are not coming with uh, what he is using, is going around. He can uh, survive with you one year, two years, but in the end, he's going away. It's not the money that can stop uh, uh, the rider because it's, his unsuccess uh, is going to close his career. So he has to find other solution. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. The develop is, uh, I, we never stop developing. You know better than me. During the year, we always do something. You always come to me with some idea. I always study, I design. And in one moment, that can be good. Maybe because there is that regat on Garda, there is the other uh, test in Tarifa or in Tenerife, where he wants. Uh, I am prepared and they, uh, you go there with this. And then you come back with uh, try to do this change that and then always always you can say now we develop from uh, i don't know from august to october because uh, you arrive always with uh, you are uh, even uh, you were like that you arrive in the end like this uh, think about if you do only one or two months it's impossible you're over that than me yeah 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 okay so now claudio badiali the brand owner how do you determine success in uh in in a windsurfing brand or in your brand was it world titles is it profit you know money is it the amount of sales sold customer satisfaction when you you know at the end of the day to have a good day what do you what do you look at uh, i suppose that is uh, putting a little bit of uh, everything you said together because uh, for me absolutely is not the money the money is not giving an ss uh, uh, okay, I can make one sale that I sell uh, 20,000 pieces because it's uh, fantastic. And then after two years, everybody is doing something like that. It's finished. So the reality is that uh, I feel okay uh, like a brand when the brand is uh, growing up uh, in a way that uh, everybody that are being part uh, are satisfied naturally. Economically, I mean, but uh, absolutely for me important is uh, to leave uh, a sign in, uh, in the story. So uh, winning with the, mm, the, uh, the sale branded for someone else is not the same that winning with, uh, mm, with my, my face. So uh, this is my dream. I want that for me, for, uh, for you, for uh, all the riders. And uh, with this, uh, you can have... Uh, in the in the in the future, a little growing up day by day, all, all the things, all the things are uh, are growing in this way. Yeah. So, I suppose uh, we are in the right direction. Uh, you say you talk about five years. I I'm believing that it will happen in less than three. But uh, let's see, let's see. Depends mostly of you. <laughs> no, I yeah. thought that. Want to put uh, this on you? You know better than me what to do. You have been uh, taking a kind of uh, uh, year by year, step by step, in the right way. You have not uh, jumped uh, from uh, twenty to third second, for example. That could have been. Uh, I wish. Happiness. This year, <laughs> this year was it was possible. This year was possible. You know, one regatta, you can have uh, the wonderful day. The perfect, uh, the perfect uh, um, hurricane, the perfect uh, storm, and then you are there in the top. But uh, next year, so you have created this, and this is what uh, you are doing in the results. I suppose that we are going for the brand. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, looks like the future. Future is bright. <laughs> At, at Challenger, at Challenger Sales. Claudio, thank you so much for this interview. Uh, a lot of interesting insight. And uh, yeah, 
And don't forget about that 771 <laughs> prototype. <laughs> uh, absolutely. It's, it's, my, it's my nightmare. It's my nightmare. I don't sleep in the night thinking all mm-hmm. this. Okay, Vacek. Thank you very Grazie much. Grazie mille. To all uh, people that is watching, we watch, and I hope uh, that uh, they will still go on believing that uh, we are making the best sport over, ever. Really. We are. I think yeah. there, is, there is no football player that can make your life magic. You are in the best beaches. You are in, uh, you're doing what you want. You, you are not rich probably, but uh, you are the richest man for what you are doing. Believe me, you're a lucky man. That's you a great can. way to end it. Great way. Grazie mille, Claudio. To you. There we go. Another podcast. Let us know what you think about that. Did you uh, find it interesting having a sail designer? Do we need more sail designers? Do we need more board designers? Do we need more background people or do we need more riders? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to support the uh, podcast, you can always chip in some beer money and you will be entered into those. uh, Well, you'll be able to enter the competition to win sails, which we've got going on at the moment and boards coming up. Um, If you don't want to miss a podcast, subscribe. Subscribe to Windsurfing TV. Yeah, you can subscribe and you won't miss another episode. I'll see you for the next one.